Hello, it's Friday the 17th of April, it's 2015, and I'm A.D. Hobbs. And um, this is my first Star Trek themed review. I've been thinking about doing Star Trek reviews for some time, but um, yeah, this is my first one. And I thought about it, should I do them in, in the order they were made, or the order they're set? Because of course prequel films were made after the original film, so I thought, after a careful amount of research, I decided do them in the order they're set. So the first thing I'm going to do is Star Trek Enterprise. Was it a good TV show? Well, yes and no. There were good things and bad things about it. Um, it was originally just called Enterprise, the first series, and it was shown in America in 2001 and then in England in 2002. Then afterwards they changed the title to Star Trek Enterprise because the main spaceship is called Enterprise. And I think it was the first show to have um, uh, words to the theme tune. That had never been done before in any of the previous Star Treks, yeah. And, um, uh, okay, I'll say um, good things and bad things about it. Um, but first of all, okay, a bad thing. I don't like that the main spaceship is called Enterprise. That's silly. We've had the, the main focus of the story called Enterprise in the original, then in Next Generation, and now in this prequel. Now, there are five um, main incarnations of Star Trek. The prequel, the original, Next Generation, DS9, and Voyager. Now, only two of them are not called Enterprise, so it gets rather confusing, doesn't it? You know, you don't know which spaceship they're talking about, so... Oh, I don't know. What were the writers thinking? Do they think that's what the public want? They just want as many spaceships to be called Enterprise as possible? The main spaceship is Enterprise in the Star Trek uh, films and the Next Generation films. I think, no, it's getting out of hand. Can we please don't call any other spaceships uh, Enterprise? You know, we've got quite enough of them. Um, oh, yes, and uh, something... Uh, uh, well, I met a Star Trek fan once. I think it was at a sci-fi convention years ago. But Well, anyway, the point is he said there's some sort of constant in all the different versions of Star Trek. In the original, there's a character that doesn't quite fit in, that's Spock. And then Data is the one that doesn't quite fit in in Next Generation. Odo is the one that doesn't quite fit in in um, DS9. And then Neelix is the one that doesn't quite fit in. Then he seems to be getting one okay, so they get someone else that doesn't quite fit in, and that's Seven of Nine. So always someone that doesn't quite fit in with the crew. And I suppose, well, in um, uh, Star Trek Enterprise, it's Dr. Phlox doesn't quite fit in. Yeah, the actor does a very strange voice, very eerie, like he's not of this world, yeah, and he doesn't understand human behaviour, why they behave the way they do, their customs and stuff, but he does his best to blend in, yeah, he's a Cardassian, or is he, is he, because uh, he has the things around his eyes and the neck, or is he one of those aliens that's very similar to a Cardassian but isn't, um, I'm not sure, I think he's a Cardassian. Not a Kardashian, yes, I want to make that perfectly clear, yes. Do not confuse a Kardashian with a Kardashian, yes. Two very different things, yes, so good safety tip there. Don't confuse a Kardashian with a Kardashian, yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> so, um, so the, I, I think, I'm not sure, but I think the reason Star Trek Enterprise wasn't that successful was because they were good stories, yeah, very good stories, good special effects and all that, so maybe it was just that, um... The people had had enough of Star Trek. They were getting fed up with it, you know. Just weren't in the mood for an extra incarnation of the Star Trek saga. So maybe the timing was wrong. Maybe it would have done better re released a, a few years later. Um, I, I don't know. All I know is that the ratings were starting to go down in Series 2. And the only reason the Series 3 was done was because the fans demanded it. They really wanted it, yeah. One final third series was done, and then that was it. So, um... I personally thought, yeah, they were very good stories, you know, but um, I guess when a show's on a budget as big as that, you've got to get, yeah, it's got to break even. It's got to make the money in return. Okay, um, okay, a few more bad things <laughs> about, about Star Trek Enterprise. Um, uh, I'm glad they changed the title just to Star Trek, uh, to Star Trek Enterprise as opposed to just Enterprise, because that could mean anything. Yeah. Anyway, we're set in the year 2154. And so it's like uh, the first deep, deep, ex deep exploration of space, you know. Before then, they just whizzed around to the nearest planet. But the idea of, you know, doing a full galactic exploration thing, 
They couldn't do that until they had Warp 5, apparently. Because Warp 2 or Warp 4 was just too slow to do a proper trek of the whole galaxy. So they had to wait till they had Warp 5. I don't think they'd have Warp 5 by 2154. I think they wouldn't have that until the beginning of the, the 23rd century. So I thought the timing could, should have been in a different place. You know, that's that's my opinion. The other thing is, instead of, you know, the beam me up Scotty thing, they don't teleport down to the planet's surface because the teleporting technology isn't ready yet. Instead, they go down in like a little shuttle, shuttlecraft from the main ship and land down like that, yeah. And um, they can uh, beam up um, cargo, but not people. However... In the second episode of the first series, they beam a person on board a ship, you know, which was stupid. That's so silly. You've just made it very clear the teleporting technology isn't ready yet to teleport people. So you could have done that in the second series or the third series. Don't do it in the second ever episode. That That's stupid. That's very inconsistent. Yeah. We do meet the, the guy that invented the transporter. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And, um... Well, the things didn't I like about it? Um, well, they, 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 there's no mention of the Federation. You know, I guess maybe because I, the Federation hasn't been founded yet. Maybe that's why it is. Because the uniforms they wear are not, not Federation. I assume they were, but they're not. No, this is before the Federation's founded. I don't know. Maybe when we got... If they did another, a third, or a, a fourth or a fifth series, maybe the Federation would have been founded. But they didn't do any more series. So there we are. Um... Okay, some good things. Say some good things about it now. Um, I, I like the way they connect it to the uh, to the, the Star Trek we're familiar with. Like, for instance, we see the green-skinned girls, um, the Orion girls, they're slave girls. Except they're not really slaves. They fool them into thinking they're slaves, yeah. And um, we see Andorians, the ones of blue skin and the blue antennae. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And the blue antennae can move every now and again with animatronic technology. So that was pretty cool, yeah. They didn't have animatronic technology in the 60s. So, yeah, we see an improved version of what we're familiar with. So that's quite cool. Except there was one episode of Star Trek Enterprise when um, there was a, a blue Andorian with the blue antennas. He wanted to find the woman he loved, a Andorian woman, but um, couldn't find her anywhere. But he won't give up. You know, priority one is getting her back safely. Just one point. Andorians need four genders to make a baby. Humans only need two genders, but Andorans need four different genders to make a baby. So why is all his attention on getting to this one person? <laughs> why does he favour one above the other uh, two, three that he needs? You know, you know. so that's a bit silly. But um, I noticed that because I'm a big Star Trek fan. Is the target audience die-hard Star Trek fans or people in general? So, yeah, so they just, I don't know, maybe they that, that, that blooper got there by mistake or whatever. And, um, unfortunately, I don't have any visual aid for this review. I wanted to get some. Two months ago, I went to a sci-fi convention. There was loads of Star Trek merchandise. And I wanted a toy of the NX-01 Enterprise, the prequel Enterprise. But I couldn't find one anywhere. I looked everywhere. I looked high and low. None of them anywhere. I guess Star Trek Enterprise wasn't deemed popular enough to have a toy of that, that spaceship. Which I think is a bit harsh. Come on. You know, it is part of the Star Trek legend. At least have... One co one replica of the ship, but couldn't find one anywhere. Oh yes, and it's called NX-01. Just like the Excelsior in Star Trek 3 has NX-2000. And later in Star Trek 6, NCC-2000. Now the NX, the X bit, means this vessel is in an experimental stage. It hasn't quite been perfected yet. So that's that's why NX. And then... I presume if they'd done more series, the Enterprise would have been NCC-01, you know. But no, I'm pretty sure throughout the show it's NX and then 01. And, um, so, um, yeah, uh, Jonathan Archer, the captain, does a half-decent job as the, uh, the moral compass, you know, he tells everyone what to do and how to react in an unknown situation and all that. So, I thought the public were being a bit harsh. It is a good show, you know. And, uh, oh yes, must mention the Klingons. We see Klingons, and I think it's the first series of Star Trek Enterprise. And what happens is, um, some of them get exposed to radiation or some sort of horrible disease. And their wrinkly forehead gets horribly deformed. So there's no wrinkles at all. <laughs> the reason this story was put in 
to answer a blooper in um, how come they, there's no wrinkles on the Klingons' foreheads in the 1960 TV show. Well, that explains why, because some of them were, were deformed somehow and ended up like that in the 21st century. So they put right that continuity blooper by doing that story. Of course, we know the real reason they don't have wrinkles is because the 1960 show was on a very small budget. But, uh, yeah, you just go with it, yeah. Also, um, the engineer of the crew of the, of the prequel Enterprise, I think he's called Tuck, and um, he falls in love with Topol, the very beautiful Vulcan lady, because they have to have at least one Vulcan aboard the crew. Anyway, um, they fall in love, and but they don't know whether or not to make it public or keep it secret, because although it's legal... Humans falling in love with Vulcans, it's frowned upon, you know. Whereas it's not frowned upon, at least not as much, a hundred years later in the 23rd century. So yeah, I thought that was cool, the way we see, because this is in the 22nd century, it's a different views of right and wrong, different attitudes and different values, yeah. So yeah, yeah, the Star Trek universe really expands, so that, that was pretty cool. And, um, okay, I better wrap this review up. Um, I enjoyed it, yes. I think maybe one reason why Star Trek Enterprise had great potential, but um, I don't know, the characters weren't as memorable as the ones we get in the other ones. Yeah, not as distinctive. I don't know. A bit more character development, or or maybe it was just timing. Maybe it could have been released at a different time. And the big cliche Star Trek fans will say is, Star Trek Enterprise, not as good as the other incarnations of Star Trek. No, it isn't. But it does a half-decent job. It's well worth a look, yes. Yeah. So if, you, if you're if you a Star Trek fan and you've never seen Star Trek Enterprise, I highly recommend seeing it. Yeah, it does raise some interesting ideas, yeah. And um, I would have liked to see how the Federation was formed, you know, <laughs> because it's pre-Federation, the Federation of Planets, you know. But um, I guess that will have to be another story on the shelf, yeah, for the Star Trek franchise. OK, I think I've said all I need to say, and... Um, well, my ambition is to get that <laughs> NX-01 one, yeah. And um, so, yes, yeah, so a few bits and pieces could have been tidied up, and I think the show would have, been, would have been better if they'd have called the main starship something other than Enterprise. And Oh, one final note. We see um, uh, one episode, there's images of the future. We see the Enterprise J, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, it's connected to the Star Trek we're familiar with and Star Trek we're unfamiliar with as well, yeah. Okay, that's enough from me, and take care.